793 AD, a group of envoys from the remote southwestern vassal states came to the Da Ming Palace of the Tang Dynasty. Among the envoys, one attracted particular attention. They were from a vassal state called the Eastern Women Kingdom, a kingdom ruled solely by women. This is an account taken from the old Book of Tang, considered an historical account of what happened during the Tang Dynasty. According to the book, the territory of the Kingdom of Women was a narrow strip found in the upper reaches of the Dadu River, with Danba serving as its center. Does such speculation hold water, though? And can we find traces of the kingdom today? In this book, the Kingdom of Women was described to have over 80 towns under its jurisdiction with more than 40,000 citizens some 10,000 soldiers. However, the current scale of villages in the vicinity of Dunbar showed little of its past grandeur. It is most likely that the Kingdom of Women was an alliance consisting of 80 tribes in the mountains, the most prominent and respected women elected as its head. If this is true, where is the tribe? This remains an unsolved puzzle. A legend about Mount Suopo has attracted attention over the years. It is said that the ruins of the Queen's residence is hidden deep in the jungles there. The path to the ruins is known only by a couple of senior villagers from Longjong village. Therefore, very few have visited this place before. What kind of secret shall be unveiled at the end of this path? What are we going to find there? After a four-hour trek, the ruins of what look like watchtowers is finally standing before us. These crumbled walls, dilapidated yet majestic ancient towers, make us feel as if we are visiting a world heritage site such as Angkor Wat. The air is filled with the solemnness of history. are still somewhat recognizable. Each place has a Gaiarong Tibetan name. Chinese translation of these names sounds awesome, indicating that this might be where the Queen's Palace was. Where are the names from?
This photo was taken near the cliff behind the ruins. On the cliff, a female face is dimly visible. Hatton convinced the villagers that this place was the capital of the Kingdom of Women. Sitting on the cliff, some 3,000 meters above sea level, the castle is perched above its surroundings, which is easily defended from such a location. This is a page of history that has been forgotten by people. Nobody has conducted any carbon dating or architectural identification. Therefore, it has remained unknown to us, keeping answers to the mystery of the Kingdom of Women at a distance. old bow and sword dance and it down in Dunbar County tells the story of 13 warriors protecting the gods. From it we can feel the strength and courage of the brave Kumba men of ancient times. What kind of qualities did the female rulers of such a kingdom have to govern the tribes and subject such brave men to their rule? Was it extraordinarily good looks, unparalleled wisdom, or something else? These people are not the only ones. They are all in the same way. 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 Dunbar County is located in the western Sichuan Canyon, between the Hongduan Mountains. The Daldu River, which flows through the area, is regarded as the River of the Queen by the local Gaiawong Tibetans. The sacred Moor Dwar Mountain, worshipped by the locals, is also known as the Mountain of the Goddess. All this evidence points to a tradition of female worship in this area since ancient times. Relics unearthed in 1987 show a notable common characteristic. Funerary goods for men are mainly weapons, while those for women are jewelry and agricultural production tools. Such division of labor conjures up a clearer vision of that distant age. About 10,000 years ago, matriarchal society was at its high watermark with the advent of the Neolithic age. At that time, women were dominant in agricultural, animal husbandry, pottery and textiles, which were much better sources of food and clothing than that of hunting and collecting. In addition, women were responsible for cooking, chores and raising their children. On contrast, men were engaged in fishing and hunting, which contributed far less to the family and tribe. Therefore, women took a dominant role in social and economic life, constituting a basis for female worship. The unearthed items found in the sarcophaguses show that the tribes living here during that time had some characteristics of a matriarchal society. Records about the Kingdom of Women are mainly found in the history of the Sui and Tang dynasties. At that time, however, China had already entered an era of male dominance. So how was it that this particular area remained distinct and intact from that of the world around it? How did they pass down the worship of females and also remain uninfluenced by other cultures? This Gaosan Xia Gu area, this area, has been a long-term history of 
生存，而不受到其他强势文化的侵扰。According to historical records, as a vassal state of the Tang, the Kingdom of Women had been in continuous contact with the Tang regime for hundreds of years. How could the Tang emperors accept such a matriarchal society flourishing in one of their vassal states right under their noses? In 618 AD, the Tang dynasty was founded. Ruled by successions of aspiring and sagacious emperors, the Tang ascended to a pinnacle of prosperity during the Middle Ages and is regarded as one of the most powerful empires in China's ancient history. This proud empire also boasted of its pluralism, inclusiveness, and broad-mindedness. In the capital city, Chang'an, live businessmen, diplomats and scholars from Central Asia, Persia, Arabia and India. Exotic cultures arrived and flourished. Inclusiveness was the theme of the time. In 690 AD, Wu Tian, the only empress in Chinese history who seized the throne of the world's most powerful empire of the time. She not only continued the dynasty's glory, also enriched its level of inclusiveness by bringing about a social environment in which women thrived. From these ancient frescoes depicting people's lives in the Tang dynasty, we can see that women of the time, regardless of their social standings, can ride horses, play games as hard as the men. They wore popular low-cut dresses made of transparent tulle, exhibiting their beauty with pride. Many female politicians, poets and artists emerged during this period. It was a period when feminist consciousness awakened and thrived. This might have contributed to the survival and development of the Kingdom of Women. In these places, we can keep it alive, not in terms of the women. 不在于男性的弱、女性的强，不在于女性的优秀，而在于环境造成他们能够保存下来。The most typical thing about the Kingdom of Women is its matrilineal social structure. The Queen Regnant holds the highest position. Under her, women held all key posts. In households. The female dominated every aspect of daily life too. Wu Xi family, so, uh, that means that the family has no no father. That is, one of Wu Xi's successors. Can we still find traces of such matriarchal families in Dunbar County? <laughs> Lu Ying lives in a typical Gaiarong Tibetan family in Ba Di Township. Her grandfather, mother and father are in charge of everything in the family. Today, they are going to have a small family gathering. All the relatives in the village will come over in the evening. The seating plan at the family dinner shows the respective status of each member. Lu Ying's grandfather is sitting in the most prominent position, and her father, Lu Ying Kang, sits at the end of the seat. It's clear that this is a male-dominated family. 
Such a family is representative of the region. If Dunbar County was once the center of the Kingdom of Women, why is the most typical matriarchal family structure hardly noticeable here? What led to such features of such an iconic society to be erased? Can we still sense the past glory of the Kingdom of Women today? The Hung Duan Mountains, where the Kingdom was allegedly situated, has been a place that many ethnic groups live. Researchers have been looking fortunes in these attractions for hundreds of years. In 1922, an American explorer and botanist came here. He spent 27 years introducing this ancient and mysterious land located in southwest China to the rest of the world. He was Joseph Bock. In his monograph, Bock described the land with emotional words. He said, Yongning Lake is the most beautiful lake in Yuna. I can't imagine a better place than here. This is the place where God dwells. Yongning Lake, in Rock's book, is today's Lugu Lake. Separating Yunnan and Sichuan provinces, the lake features not only stunning scenery, but also a unique local family relationship which puzzled the scholar. He found that in Yongning, men and women never marry, but form sexual unions. The offspring resulting from such unions are taken and raised by the women and their brothers. As a botanist, Rock may not have known that such family relations were a pillar of matriarchal society. This unique aspect of local social culture was reason why the Lugu Lake area was given the title the Contemporary Kingdom of Women. Lugu Lake, the mysterious place in Rock's description, still carries on the lifestyle of the legendary Kingdom of Women. Geographically, it is only several hundred kilometers away from Dunbar. Therefore, it might have been somewhere on the edge of the kingdom. Today, after more than a thousand years, can we find any traces of that matriarchal kingdom around here? These oil paintings bring people into the simple and flawless world of Lugu Lake. The painter, Bo Wa Gonggao, was born in a big Mosuo matrilineal family near Lugu Lake. Though living far away from home for most of his career as a painter, Bo Wa has an indelible memory of Lugu Lake. For him, it is truly the kingdom of women.
Showat's hometown of Lugu Lake is located between Sichuan and Yunnan provinces. Serene and tranquil, it seems detached from the outside world, remaining the same as when Rock visited it some 80 years prior. August the 23rd, 2011, might be the busiest day of the year for the Mosuo people living by the lake. It will be their annual mountain worship festival tomorrow. All families are busy preparing for the day. This most series of festivals falls on July the 25th of the lunar calendar, having been observed since ancient times. On that day, people worship Mount Gamo to pray for peace and prosperity in the coming year. Mount Gamo, also named the Lion Mountain, stands on the west bank of Lugu Lake. The mountain is seen as the embodiment of the goddess Gamo. The lake is called Mother Lake by the Moswa, who share female worship with that of the Kingdom of Women. The Moswa girl, Sanon Drolma, is also preparing for the day. She's choosing what to wear. For girls her age, the Mountain Worship Festival is a big day. The festival, also dubbed the Mosuo's Valentine's Day, offers a perfect opportunity for young people to know one another and potentially find mates. Drolma has been anticipating the day for a long time. She will probably find her Mr. Wright during this time. Can she find her loved one on that day? Every elder in the family is eager to find out. It's been a pretty popular topic among them for the past few days. Drolma's grandmother, Jani Ama, is the most respected person in the family. The 71-year-old woman is still the head of the family, deciding all affairs. <laughs> Uncle Ava Kasso is the most august, yet most amiable elder in Dolma's heart. He is a mainstay of the family and presides over all family rituals. He also plays an important role in Dolma's life. Mom, Dashi Ram, is the closest person to her, taking care of her since she was born. Her mom is also in charge of managing the family's money under the instruction of her mother. As evening falls, the family are enjoying their happiest hours over dinner. Dromar's sisters, brothers and nieces, everyone except her father, gather in the grandmother's room, enjoying the cosy moment. Today's topic still focuses on Dolma's unknown lover from the Mountain Worship Festival. <laughs> Quite different from ordinary families, the absence of fathers is a clear characteristic of most Moswa families. <laughs> Roma's father, Tash 
Cher d'Orgeu now works as a tour guide and canoes the tourists in Lugu Lake. Dolmo is grateful to him for giving her life, although he is more dedicated to bringing up the offspring of his own birth family and spends little time with her. These deep-rooted family traditions and values are inherited from a matriarchal society. Therefore, the Moswa way of life is called the living fossil of the matriarchy. In such a community, there is a very different society in such a community. 这包括婚姻家庭这种形态，这个确实是对于我们从历史上来反思不同文化之间的这个交融，应该是非常有意义的。At that time, women enjoyed a high prestige in society, having central roles in both clan leadership and family life. Descent was traced through the mother's side of the family. And with men, who were engaged in hunting and fishing, women provided more stable and important sustenance for life through their gathering and breeding. Their irreplaceable role in continuing the bloodline added to their high social status. The Kingdom of Women of the Sui and Tang dynasties also had a matriarchal social structure. According to historical records on the evolution of legal and institutional change during the Tang dynasty, even women of the humblest breed are heads of their families. The offspring are surnamed after their mothers. The existing matrilineal family structure in the Lugu Lake region provides for a reasonable assumption that the Kingdom of Women was located in China's southwestern borders. 这种文化现在还能够决议下来，它就是一个历史的文化活化石，它证明了一个从人类社会的这么一个从母系到父系这个发展的历程。Motherhood has permeated every aspect of life of the Moswa people. Dolma's home is a typical Moswa-style courtyard, with each room representing something. Among all of the rooms, the most unadorned one is her grandmother's. Despite its humble look, it is the solemnest place in the family. It is also the place where all the important family rituals are held. To the grandmother's room is the sacred room housing their shrine. Daily worship is held here, praying for the happiness and safety of the family. The most colorfully decorated rooms in Dolma's home are up there on the second floor, for adult women only. A romantic place where Dolma's mother and elder sisters live and enjoy the most beautiful days of their life and marriage. However, across the courtyard, there are no rooms for adult men. When night falls, adult women will enter their respective bedrooms, waiting for their partners. The 
Meanwhile, Drolma's uncles and elder brothers will set out to meet their loved ones too. Such a unique marriage custom to the Moswar people is known as the visiting marriage. Drolma turns 21 this year, the requisite age for a visiting marriage. The shy girl hasn't found an ideal lover at previous mountain worship festivals. Can she succeed this time? Dolma's mum, Dashi Ram, is concerned about this. Every few days, mum would tidy the boudoir prepared for Dolma. Everything is ready for the visiting marriage when it comes. It also reminds the mother of her younger days. Thirty years ago, Ram was as young as Drolma is. But different from Drolma, in that Ram's cheerful personality and stunning beauty made her the most outstanding girl in the village, with quite a few male suitors. Hashur Dojer was one of them. He was a quiet and modest young man, fishing with his uncle in the lake. Although his family was not rich, Roger also had a sunny smile. He believed the diligence would bring him good luck and prosperity to his family. Nima was also one of Ram's suitors. He was the best horseman and the most handsome boy in the village, with a chiseled face and a strong build, thanks perhaps to being in the company of hot-tempered horses all year round. Among all her suitors, Ala Dasher was thought to be her best choice. Dasher was born to a grazing family. It was also the most well-off family in the village, with innumerable goats and cattle. For his future, he had nothing to worry about. Who eventually won Ram's heart? The answer was revealed one year later. To many people's surprise, Ram chose neither the handsome Nima nor the rich Dasher, but the diligent Tasha Dorja. For the Moswar women, choosing lovers is a very rigorous and critical process. On a summer day, when she turned 21, Ram had her first date with Tasha Dorje. From that day on, their relationship eventually became a visiting marriage. Throughout the process, the two of them maintained a reserved and subtle respect for one another.
他们都是从这个自己最真挚的情感出发，因为把自己的这个嗯，这个他所认识的异性作为一种神来呃对待，以以他以为唯一，他没有这个说呃朝三暮四的那感觉。It was an unforgettable night for Ram. After the parents from both sides consented, Ram and Doja entered their visiting marriage from that night on. It was no different from other traditional wedding nights, except that no celebrations or blessings were held. The night was immersed in a sacred and secret atmosphere. Ram's heart was filled with happiness and shyness, and she waited quietly for her lover. How would he turn up? In the beginning, the relationship went on in secrecy. Dorje would only come to Ram's bedroom in the dead of night. In order not to attract people's attention, he would not enter through the front door, but enter in a secret way and leave quietly before the break of dawn. This continued for some time before Tasha Dorje got a matchmaker to propose to her family. After a betrothal-like ritual and acknowledgement from both sides' elders, the union between Ram and Dorje was formed. <laughs> After that, they made their relationship public. Dorje could visit Ram's room openly in the evening without trying to hide the fact. Their relationship continues to this day. He has another, uh, that is, social rumor. 社区的伦理，一个道德宽定他们，他们在走婚的时候，他绝对禁止，不允许跟第三者有来往。The story of Dolma's mum embodies the unique visiting marriage customs passed down from generation to generation among the Moswa people. Such customs help us form a more complete picture of the matriarchal social structure. To better understand the ancient kingdom of women during the Sui and Tang dynasties. This means that this story is real. It's true. It's like we talk about the history of human society, the history of history. It's a living, living teaching, a living standard, a standard in this place. This year's Mountain Worship Festival will fall on August the 24th, or July the 25th in the lunar calendar. In the early morning, Dolma's family dress themselves in festive costumes and come to worship Mount Gamo together with people from other villages. For them, the sacred mountain is the embodiment of the goddess Gamo. The worship of the mountain is, by extension, a worship of motherhood. This resembles the culture of the Kingdom of Women during the Sui and Tang dynasties. When the ritual comes to an end, a grand family picnic follows. It's the most joyful time of the year for the Mosuo people. Marriage of women is particularly important for matrilineal families. Therefore, 
Everyone in the family is focusing on Jolma, hoping that she can find her lover on this Moss War version of Valentine's Day. Can Dolma fulfill her wishes? <laughs> After the picnic, it's time for young men and women. Only on this day can the young people from different villages get together, dancing and showcasing their charm. The Mosul boys are extremely excited and eager to release their fiery energy to try and attract girls' attention. Zolma find a suitable mate? There is still one hour to go before the celebration ends. Is Dolma going to meet someone she likes this evening? At this moment, a young man from the neighboring village comes to talk with Dolma. Will they go steady? Can Dolma fulfill her family's wishes? Everything is up in the air. The celebration of the annual Mountain Worship Festival comes to an end. Tranquility returns once again to the lake. Partly thanks to the surrounding mountains, the matrilineal family structure here has been well preserved. It's a common wish among the older generation and their future generations can carry on their marriage customs so as to ensure the enduring prosperity of their families. However, as Lugu Lake is receiving more and more attention from people who long to explore the Kingdom of Women, this once secluded region has become increasingly more connected with the outside world. Changes are gradually taking place amongst the younger generation. We couldn't help but guess if the lost kingdom of women also underwent such radical changes seem to be taking place around today's Lugu Lake. The reason for the disappearance of the Kingdom of Women remains a mystery. As no trace of it can be found in historical records dating after the Tang Dynasty. What on earth led to the Kingdom's demise? According to the book, it can be said that the kingdom had been in good relations and may have exchanged envoys with the Tang Empire. But after Emperor Li Zhe ascended the throne, things began to change.
a protracted war had completely shaken the foundation of the kingdom. In 670 AD, Tubo, the present-day Tibet, conquered 18 western states and allied with Khotan to conquer Kucha. A war between Tubo and Tang lasted for three centuries. Thus, peace along the southwestern border came to an end. Located between the two warring powers, the Kingdom of Women was thrown into the center of the conflict. Times of turbulence and confusion awaited it. One history book says that the Kingdom of Women was reduced to small war-torn tribes without fixed territorial boundaries, although it still claimed to be a kingdom. the kingdom's remaining territory, the queen regent decided to seek refuge with the powerful Tang Empire. Along with the heads of some neighboring vassal states, she traveled to the Tang capital to pay homage to the Dezong Emperor Li Shi, who in turn conferred upon her an imperial title. Something else happened in the imperial palace. Although the Tang Emperor promised to provide refuge for her kingdom, Queen was disgraced by an imperial decree that her successor shall be a male. Why did the emperor make such a ruthless decision? The reason for this might have something to do with the ups and downs of the Tang Dynasty. When Li Shi was young, the empire suffered a catastrophe known as the Han Shi Rebellion. The displaced 14-year-old witnessed with his own eyes the end of the heydays of the once flourishing dynasty. After taking the helm, Li instituted many a reform in the hope of restoring past glory, but ended up failing. The frustrated emperor had thus developed an extremely contradictory personality. Perhaps it was such a personality that made Li determined to change this kingdom ruled by women. such speculation, the Kingdom of Women had to abide by the Imperial Edict and began to have male rulers. With the passage of time, the once unique kingdom gradually lost the influence of past female dominance. Yet there is another thought on the subject that about 5,500 years ago, men became major creators and owners of social wealth, relying on their physical strength. They passed on their waxing influence from generation to generation, which eventually resulted in a definitive change to their dominance of society. The foundation of matriarchy began to crumble. Zanzu. 
和生产中，男人起了更重要的作用，那么他这个，呃，所以在家庭的地位，他就会发生一些根本性的变化。Since that time, patriarchy gradually faded out and was replaced by patriarchy. Therefore, the demise of the kingdom of women was inevitable from the perspective of human development. 